Hi, my name is Giuseppina Zuri and I'm a Lacasha Infinite Fellow at IDISC in Barcelona, where I study human exposure to microplastics and their effects on our Earth, together with Professor Silvia Lacorte and Dr. Angeliki Caranasi. In the last few years, microplastics have drawn increased attention since it has been suggested that they may pose a threat to the environment as well as biota in humans. They appear as minute pieces of plastics of different shapes, including fragments and fibers. And in 2004, the term microplastics was coined as the contraction of the words microscopic and plastics. In order to be classified as such, according to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, they have to measure up to five millimeters along their longest dimension, which is basically the size of a sesame seed. But where do microplastics come from? Some are intentionally produced as microbeads and added to products like scrubs. These are called primary microplastics. Others come from degradation of larger plastic products due to solar radiation, wind and sea waves, which speed up their breakdown and facilitate their release into the environment. These are called secondary microplastics. I ask you now to think about large plastic items. What comes to your mind? Yes, this is all correct but this list is not exhaustive. We are surrounded by plastic without even thinking of it, and with aging or corrosion, these items could potentially release microplastics. This is why today's research focuses on a variety of samples to understand the fate of microplastics. Among those are bottled and tap water, soft drinks and beer, as well as food. Also, airborne microplastics have recently come to receive more attention, though more research needs to be carried out in this area. Results suggest that we are exposed to microplastics mainly through inhalation and ingestion, and that microplastics might represent a health hazard for humans, especially for the vulnerable, including the elderly and infants. However, we still need to clarify whether and how microplastics affect our health. This is imperative to tackle this issue in the most appropriate manner. So far, the lack of state-of-the-art technology to quantify microplastics has represented a major limiting factor. However, at CSIC, I can access avant-garde technology which allows me to develop analytical methods to quantify microplastics in different samples, including air, water, and even tile wear. This is the first step to estimate our exposure to microplastics. And then I will use this data to see whether and how this concentration of microplastics we are exposed to actually has a negative impact on our Earth. Yo investigo, yo soy sick.